Hi, on the FM exam, you're going to see uh, uh, a lot of exam, a lot of examples when you're uh, practicing for the exam, and probably several questions on the exam on a concept called duration. So there's two types of duration: there's something called Macaulay duration and something called uh, modified duration. So in this part one video, learning video, we're going to talk about Macaulay duration. We'll do, we'll talk about modified duration next. So for Macaulay duration, let's kind of set it up with, uh, with an example. So let's suppose that we have a timeline that looks like this. So at time one, you have a payment of 10. At time two, you have a payment of 20. And at time three, you have a payment of 1,030. Now, I'm kind of thinking in the context of a bond here, because you're most likely to see a duration problem in the context of a bond. And so I'm thinking of this as being a bond uh, where the coupon at time one is 10, the coupon at time two is 20, the coupon at time three is 30, and then there's a redemption value also at, at time three of 1,000. So that's why I get a total payment of 1,030 at time three. So I, again, I'm kind of thinking of a bond, and uh, the question would be here, the, let me kind of work my way up to the definition of duration by asking a question and, and uh, prompting you for some answers. So the, the question might be, well, what's the average time that the payments are made. And so you might look at this and say, well, the average time that the payments are made, the payments are made at time one, two, and three. So since the payments are made at times one, two, and three, the average time would be time two. And if you told me that, I would say, okay, I, that, that's a reason. I, I could see where you could have that answer. But it's a little bit misleading uh, because the payments are not the same. You're not making the same payment at time one as you are at time two as you are at time three. So that's a little bit of a misleading answer, although I could see where you could say that the payments, uh, the average payment is at time two. Let me turn the problem around a little bit, though, and say instead of at time one having a payment of of, of 10, let's say that you owe 10 people $1 and you owe 20 people $2 and you owe 1,030 people $3. And then if I said, well, what's the average amount that you owe? Well, surely you wouldn't say it would be $2 in that case. You owe 1,030 people $3, you owe 20 people $2, and you owe 10 people $1. So if I said, well, what's the average amount that you would owe? Uh, I would hope you would do something like this. You would say, well, let's see, uh, the, the total amount I'm going to pay is I'm going to pay 10 people $1, and then tw 20 people 2, and then 1,033. So the total amount I'm going to pay is 10 times 1 plus 20 times 2 plus 1,000 times 3, and then divide that by the number of people. The, num the numerator is the total amount you're paying, then the denominator divide by that, divide by the number of people you're paying, which is... 10 plus 20 plus 1,030, and if you do this, you'll get something like a 2.96. And so that's uh, uh, that's probably a little bit better of a answer, in my opinion, as far as the average timing of the payments, because this does take into consideration the amounts of the payment. Now, what I want to do is rewrite this expression, this last expression I have. Let me rewrite it another way just to make a point here. Um, let's uh, first recognize that the denominator is just 1,060. And so I could separate that one term expression that had a, just a numerator and a, and a denominator into a three term expression written this way as a 10 divided by 1,060 times a 1 plus a 20 divided by 1,060 times 2 plus a 1,030 divided by 1,060 times 3. Uh, I mean, that's a three-term expression. If you were to combine all three terms, you would do so by taking a common denominator being the 1,060, adding up the numerators, and then you'll see you get exactly the same thing. So that's how I want to write the expression. The reason I want to write it this way is because this is what's called a weighted average of the, of the, of the values 1, 2, and 3. We're taking a weighted average of 1, 2, and 3 when it's written this way, with the weights being 10 divided by 1,060, 20 divided by 1,060, and 30, I'm sorry, 1,030 divided by 1,060. And so the, the idea behind a weighted average is, let's talk about the weights. The weights, notice that those are numbers that are between 0 and 1, and they add up to 1. When you add them all up, you get 1. That's, that's what uh, that's the, those are the conditions that define weights when you have a weighted average. Okay, so going back to our, uh, uh, our weighted average here in this case is a 2.96. 
And if that's the answer that you came up, I'd say, okay, yeah, that's that's I, I can see where you got that answer. But it's also a little bit misleading because it doesn't take into account the time value of money. So there's actually a third answer that would take into uh, that we can take into account the time value of money. So let's use a weighted average like we did in, in, in A2, answer two. Let's use a weighted average that takes into account the time value of money. And so instead of the weight for, say, uh, the number one, the weight for the number one being 10 over 1,060, let's say instead of that being the weight at time one, it doesn't take into account that the payment was made at time one. Let's say the weight at time one was the present value of the payment at time one divided by the present value of all the payments. So for instance, the numerator for the weight at time one would be a 10V now. And then the numerator for weight two would be a 20V squared. And the numerator for weight three would be 1,030V cubed. That's the present value of the payment. And then the denominator would be the present value of all the payments. So is this really a weighted average? Well, let's see. Let's look at the, I've highlighted in red what the weights are. And of course, all of those in values in red are gonna be numbers between zero and one. And if you add them all up, because you're, at, you're adding up these three things that all have the same denominator. When you add them up, just add the numerators and you can see the numerator is equal to the denominator after you've added them all up. So you actually do get one. You do get then a weighted average, um, a weighted average here. And so uh, let's, let's, uh, that would be one of our, our choices. And, and uh, uh, in this case, let me, uh, uh, let me combine the three terms into a single term expression. In the denominator, I'm going to get just the present value. In the numerator, I'll get 1 times 10 times V, and then uh, uh, I could rewrite the, the terms as the second term, for instance, in the numerator as a 2 times 20 V squared, and then the last term I could write as a 3 times 1,030 V cubed. The reason I want to do this, I'll highlight it in red, is because now if you look at the numerator, in the numerator, you're taking the time that the payment is made, one, for the first product that's in red. I got a one times 10. At time one, the payment was 10, so I take a one times 10. At time two, the payment was 20, so I'm going to take a two times 20 in, in the second term. And then at time three, I had a payment of 1,030, so in that numerator, I'm going to take a three times 1,030 and then discount that. So the, the answer we would get when we do this is actually the Macaulay duration of that set of payments. And so if we look at a, a, a general timeline here, just a, a general situation instead of specific values. So at time one, I'd have a payment of cap C1, at time two, a payment of cap C2 and so forth. Then the definition of Macaulay duration, the Macaulay duration of a set of payments is the weighted average of the times of the payments where the weights where the weight of the payment at time t is equal to the present value of the payment at time t divided by the present value of all the payments. And so if I uh, unwind this, this is exactly what we just did in that answer choice three. I have a MACD, and there's a shorthand notation that I could use for uh, what this is going to be, but it, let's write it out longhand first. And so uh, what did we do before we took uh, we took the payment uh, at time one. We took a one times the payment at time one and discounted that in, in the numerator. And then the second term would be uh, two times the payment at time two discounted, so multiplied by V squared. And then the third term in the numerator would be three times the payment at time three and then discounted, so that would be times a V cubed. And I'd just continue this pattern. And then the denominator is just the present value of all the payments. And so again, I've highlighted in red the difference between the numerator and the denominator. The denominator is just the present value of all the payments. The numerator, you don't take the present value of the payments, but you take the payment amount times the time it was paid and then take the present value of that result. And so the, I mentioned that there's some shorthand notation that I could use here. Um, and so let's use the sigma notation that uh, for, for the sum. And so in the denominator, you can see that I'm just taking a summation where the sum and is a cap C sub T times a V to the T. But in the numerator, I have to multiply the cap C sub T, which is the payment at time T, times T. So in the numerator, the sum and is going to be a T times cap C sub T 
times a v to the t. So that's the definition of, of Macaulay duration. Uh, so let me highlight it. Let me, uh, that's what you're, you're going to need to commit to memory. And uh, we'll look at some examples in, in later videos. We'll see some examples of how you apply this formula. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.